Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm back in the shop. Yeah, if you're making lures in molds with two or three part epoxies, you might have some questions. Maybe you're just starting out or maybe you've been doing it for a while and you haven't quite gotten it tweaked in. Well, if you're interested in how an engineer takes a look at this, stick around. First, let's talk about the parts that go into mixing a resin to pour into your mold. Essentially, there's going to have to be three parts. The two resin parts, part A and part B, whichever kind of resins you might use, and then some sort of buoyant filler, something to add volume without adding much weight and therefore making it very light and, and buoyant and floaty. These are micro balloons. This particular batch is from uh, Lumalite, but I also have bought it in bigger quantities from a company called Raw Materials. So if you're wondering if you have to add some sort of filler, my answer is yeah, you do actually. Uh, ironically, to be able to really control the way your lure uh, balances and how that lure behaves in the water when you're twitching it or pulling it or cranking it, you've got to make it buoyant so that you can then add weight, lower the center of gravity, and have it be more in control. Let me show you on the dry erase board. So for you to be able to get some control over how your lure behaves, how it sets in the water, how it comes through the water, you have to be able to control the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy. So let's say you have some sort of lure you've come up with. There, that's some kind of wobble diver. Um, and then maybe you've come up with a uh, twitch bait. Maybe you've got some sort of topwater bait. All three styles of these lures have to start out buoyant, and this is why. These lures are seeing a force downward from gravity, and that's the weight of the lure, and a force upward from buoyancy. You've got to have that buoyant force so that you can then control it. Most people know to go ahead and put weight down low on your lure so that it sits upright. But without this buoyant force, without having this lure body be floaty, you can't control how this lure sits in the water. So the question is, what are the ratios? A to B to the filler to F. Well, obviously these guys are equal. This is the big question mark. Now one of the things I noticed early on when I first started making lures out of resin is the, the information online, most of the YouTubers aren't really giving you specific on mixing the ratio of, of the filler. But the reality is you really only need one mixture. You can work from one mix uh, to everything. I, I have two. I have a really buoyant one, very, a very floaty one, and I have one that's not that buoyant or buoyant enough but not as buoyant as the other. And ironically, the, the least buoyant is the one I use for top water because top water is the one that you need least uh, control of how it actually sits because it just floats on top. So I'm going to share with you those two mixtures and I'm, I'll, I'll declare now that that's really all you'll ever need. From there, all you'll have to do is figure out how much weight to put in the body to make it do what you want it to do. So how did I establish this? probably the same way you guys are probably trying to do it now or have already done it and that is a bunch of experimentation. Each one of these little pucks are all different mixes and they all have the uh, ratios and then the actual density. I did a lot of experimentation as you can see and I put a lot of that stuff in spreadsheets and in the end it, I don't really need to refine it that much. The, the important part is getting something that you can begin to work with with the weights inside the body. After that, it's just a matter of the shape of that lure and how quickly you want it to sink, float, or suspend. So let's go to the components. You'll need to have a relatively quick setting resin mix. I've been using the, this amazing white stuff from uh, Alumalite. It's really good. It's a little expensive. Uh, you can also buy the less expensive stuff. This is from Specialty Resins. It's just as strong. I've tested it sets up just as fast. This stuff is black. The big difference besides the price is that there's a lot more solvents in this uh, mix. 
let me show you what this glass beads look like. It looks like talcum powder is what it looks like. It's very fine. It's probably a good idea not to breathe this stuff in. It's glass and glass is pretty much inert, but who knows? It might get stuck in your lungs. But you can see it's very fine powder. To me, it looks like cornstarch. There's two things going on when you're mixing this stuff. One, as you mix your filler into your resin, you're actually blending it in relatively uniformly. As it sets up in your lure, it begins to float. Now, it's very buoyant. They are literally little glass balls of air. Uh, and they'll float to the top of your, of your lure body. And you need to be able to use that to your advantage. Always, always put your filler hole, the sprue on your mold, at the very top. Always do that. This, this way you're sure that the, that the top of that lure is where all those little bubbles end up kind of floating to the top. Okay, so I'm going to give you the ratio, but I, first I got to let you know this is all based on weight. I don't do volumetric mixing. Volumetric mixing is wasteful and it's inaccurate as hell because you've got to look at a cup perfectly level and then find the meniscus and it's a waste of time. It's better just to weigh it. Get yourself a 10 or $12 uh, Chinese little gram scale that goes out to two, two decimal points. And that's all you need. I bought like three and I think I got them for like eight bucks a piece. If you want to be able to hit the same lure over and over, you got to be pretty accurate in how you mix it. So let me show you what I use. So a typical lure of mine has a volume that's equal to about 12 grams total of resin right so that's six grams of a and six grams of b so since this is 12 grams for my most buoyant mix i use a 10 percent mix so that that equals 1.2 grams of the filler right and if i'm going to do a less buoyant mix in other words for the top water I'll use an 8% mix and that's approximately 1.0 and that's all you need those two mixes is all you'll need to do a good lure don't get fancy don't start tweaking it to try to make it work so it's exactly where you want it without having to put weight in it it doesn't work I promise you this is for my wobble grub this is a uh, top water action lure for this lure the 10% mix is best, so uh, it's a little bigger than my average lures. The, uh, the volume is going to be 9.5 of A, 9.5 of B, that's 19 grams total. So 10% mix, filler is going to be 1.9 grams. Real simple basic scale. I'm going to turn it on. All I need is one cup. I'm going to tear it so it zeroes out. I always start out with B. It's just because it's got a color and keeps me straight. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 9.5 grams. All right, that's close enough. 5 0, oh, we're right on the money. 5 0, oh, 5 1. If you're a couple of hundreds of a gram off it, that's not a problem okay. so the next step is to go ahead and blend in the micro balloons now I'm gonna tear which means to zero and I'm gonna put in my 10% which is what was it 1.9 and go to 1.9 this is gonna look a little excessive what the nice thing about not having it mixed is you can actually scoop a little off the top if you go over a little bit but it's right on the money 1.9 so now it's just a matter of mixing. This looks like it's going to be impossible to mix, but the reality is you just give it a little bit of agitation and it begins to blend in and it'll turn into a consistency about uh, mayonnaise. And there you go. It's starting to mix in. Don't get too excited and agitate this too much. You'll add too many bubbles. And then you can just scrape off the excess from your stick slide the rest down all right so now I'm ready to tear again now at this point I got to be sure I'm ready to pour and I am this thing's ready I'm gonna tear this out 
I'll go to my A since I use B first. And there's 9.5 right on the money. And now we mix. Now you'll notice that my stirring stick has been cut off and it has a nice little chamfer. Uh, it makes it a little easier to get into those corners and be sure you've got it nicely stirred. All right, so now this is not exciting. It's just a matter of mixing. And if you haven't done this before, you'll start to feel it set off uh, in your hand. You'll feel it get start to warm. Uh, it'll start slowly at first. When you feel it really accelerating, in other words, the heat building faster than you have uh, initially felt it, it's time to pour it. You don't want to wait too much longer because it will set up and you won't be able to pour it well and it won't get rid of the bubble. So right now it's ready to go. I like to try to stream it out as thin as possible. That helps get the bubbles out. Now I've got this bad boy measured to a T so you don't see it until it starts to expand out. The thing about this particular resin or most of these resins is they expand quite a bit so it'll expand about 10 percent uh, and it'll come over this uh, sprue in a little bit. You can see it start to grow now. That's all you'll need. A 10 percent and an 8 percent. The 8 percent is for top water and the 10 percent is for something you really need a lot of control over like a swim bait or a crank bait or even a twitch bait. So the key here is to be consistent to try to use the same formula over and over. When you do that, you'll be able to just work with one variable, and that's the weight you put in the lure and where on the lure body you do it. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you guys out. If you have questions, certainly ask them. As always, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It helps. <laughs> Share this with your friends, and I'll catch you on the next video. Hopefully, I keep saying this, hopefully it'll be fishing. Take care.